In this video, I'm going to walk through the practical application of human design and how you can use the information that it gives you to build a business that you love. What's up, y'all? I'm Amanda Horvath, and I am on a mission to make video accessible to the masses. Your message matters, and I am here to eliminate obstacles in your path to getting that message out there. So if that is something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Before we dive into the content of today's video, I wanna quickly address my regular viewers out there who are scratching their heads at this ma major pivot or seemingly major pivot that I have thrown onto this channel with introducing human design to you. I wanna reassure you that my mission hasn't changed. I am here to make video accessible to the masses, but I'm also here to help you design a business that you love that is not going to burn you out. And behind the scenes, I have really been diving into human design since May of 2020. I waited to share it with you guys for quite some time because I know that this is something that a lot of people are going to be hesitant to try on for themselves. So in this video, I really want to walk you through how it's been beneficial to me and share a little bit more about myself and how this is helping inform business decisions moving forward so that you can see that it's not as scary as it might initially seem. I'm going to be breaking this video into three sections. The first section, I'm going to talk through different influencers that I've followed in the past and how looking at their charts and looking at mine has helped me wake up to the different ways that our energy works and where I might need to deviate from the business models that they teach. Then I am going to go into my personal charts and show you the tangible takeaways that I am walking away with that have begun to inform decisions about the ideal business model that I can create. And then the third thing is I'm going to share and invite you to join me in a business design mastermind where I will walk you through how to do this for your own chart alongside a human design analyst who has been doing this for 20 years. So she is the go-to expert within Austin, Texas for this information. She has a worldwide audience as well, but very, very well known in Austin for this. And then I have the business knowledge, the online marketing knowledge. She's also a real estate agent and done tons of different entrepreneurial ventures herself as well. So the combination of the two together forming this mastermind group is going to be really, really powerful. So I'm going to end the video by telling you more about that. Part one, influencer charts. Now, before we dive into the influencer charts, I want to give you a foundation of my type and as well as the family that I grew up in. So I am a projector. 20% of the population are projectors. And once again, if you don't know your type, then you can follow the link to the quick start guide to human design below this video and discover your type for yourself as well. So I'm a projector. 20% of the population are projectors. This is what my chart looks like. You can see that I have a lot of open centers and I have two centers defined. As a projector, projectors are most likely to be conditioned by those around them. So for me, I was raised in a family of manifesting generators. My mom's a manifesting generator, my dad, my sister, my brother, and then I have another sister who's a generator. So I have gotten used to being around this generator energy, this go, 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 work, hustle, make things happen kind of energy. So waking up to the fact that I'm a projector has been very eye-opening because it's, it's very different than what I've been conditioned to be. Now enter the influencers. So let me show you their charts. So I have been following this one influencer for many, many years bring myself up on the screen here. So this person is a manifesting generator and I immediately took to her content. I loved how step-by-step, -step, how methodical it was and how it seemed to promise a lot of freedom in life. Well, when I found out I was a projector and looked at her chart in comparison to mine, I had a lot of aha moments that helped me realize that 
I maybe should start following someone else or designing a different business model. So this right now might not make any sense to you, but let me just quickly describe it to you so you kind of get an idea and you can look at your chart at the same time to see what resonates with you. So these four sections right here are motors and each one has like a different level of energy behind it. So this is the highest motor that you can have, the highest energy motor, and that anyone that has this defined is either a generator or a manifesting generator. So this person has three out of the four motors defined. So if you go to mine, I only have one out of the four motors defined. So right there, I already have an inconsistency if I'm following that person's advice and trying to implement the strategies that this person does, like trying to keep up in a way. <laughs> Another thing with this person is that they have a defined ego, which means that they're here to prove something. They have a consistent access to willpower as well and the abil ability to continue driving forward with that willpower. They have the full sales and marketing channel, which is this marketing, this channel right here, as well as the money line. So they are definitely here to make money, <laughs> bring in that dough through sales and marketing. And meanwhile, I only have partial of the sales and marketing channel, not the full thing. And once again, I don't have those motors and I don't have a defined ego as well. So I feel the need to prove myself, but I... I'm not here to prove myself. So once again, if you haven't watched the quick start guide to video, I kind of cover that a little bit um, in terms of the open centers and what they mean. So that's the first thing. So when I realized this, I, I was like, oh, wow, I maybe should look at other people's business models. So when I was first discovering human design, I realized, OK, maybe I need to follow a projector and get some information from them. So I was really attracted to this other influencer who I have followed over the years and taken some value from. And at first it seemed like, oh, she's a projector as well. She has splenic authority, which is the same authority that I have. You actually can't see it on here, but I have splenic authority. Oh wait, sorry, she has emotional authority, my bad. Um, so she's a projector, emotional authority. But if you look at their chart, once again, she has three motors while I only have one. So prior to learning this and prior to seeing her chart, I had spent $4,500 on her course that is a non-refundable non program that was not exactly in alignment in alignment with my own energy. So I'm realizing that a lot of people out there, they have a very different energy type to me and that I've been following people that have been building resistance in my life. So this new business model that I bought into, the concept was raise your prices, go high ticket, you're going to have high touch because of that, and you are also going to close over the phone. So that requires you to be active, talking to people over the phone, which having a full sales and marketing channel makes you perfectly primed for that. Once again, I have a partial uh, marketing channel. So as I continued looking into this, I was feeling like I, fe I felt a lot of resistance. So as I dove more and more into my chart, I've gained clarity on why their business models aren't a perfect fit for me and have found this desire to build my own custom business model. Part two, my discoveries. Since May of 2020, I've started diving into my chart just with curiosity and testing things to see if they really resonate for me or not. So I'm going to point out different elements of this chart and also kind of talk you through yours a little bit, but it this is a very specific thing. So I'm mostly going to be chatting through mine. So the first thing that you'll look at when you're looking at your chart is what are your major gifts or your major skills that you have? And that will be your channels. So anytime that there is a full line that connects two different centers, that is a major skill that you have, that you have reliable access to, like consistent access to. So the major skill that I have learned that I have is this is called the channel of struggle. Now, at first, that may seem like 
what the heck? What is the channel of struggle? That sounds terrible. Well, it has actually been really insightful with for me to learn this. And what it is, is the ability to take risks to find purpose and meaning in life. So on one side, I have the ability to assess risks. And then on the other side, I have the ability to fight for what I believe in and get behind certain risks, which is literally what I'm doing with you guys in sharing human design with you. I have found that it is a risk worth taking to get this information out to you. And if this is resonating with you, give me a like, give me some love below because this is not an easy risk to take, (laughs) but we're making it happen. So this channel specifically is defined by, or a good way to describe it is the heroine's journey. So me, I hear call to adventure and I'm ready. I'm like, yes, I will take that call to adventure. Let's embrace this. Let's go on this journey. And as I go on that journey, I hit the depth of despair where I am struggling through something. And other people in my life, they look at me and say, man, Amanda really struggles a lot. Like she's going through a lot. And for me, I don't see it as a bad thing. I actually see it as overcoming resistance to find purpose and meaning in life because I believe that failures make you stronger. And this is so core to who I am that I know this is a reliable energy that whatever obstacles come in my path, I have the ability and the determination to overcome them to find purpose and meaning in life. So if we go back to this chart here, so that's what that means. That's my greatest skill, the ability to overcome resistance to find purpose and meaning in life. But it also, some of these things are going to relate to other elements of the chart. So I'm going to quickly fly through these. Uh, Once again, this is just to give you the practical application and to show you that it's not... (laughs) It's not something that you really need to be scared of. Um, So 56, this is that I need to verbalize the journey. So I take risks to find purpose and meaning in life, and I need to externalize that and share that journey with other people, which is what I'm doing with you. And that is in my moon, which is what ultimately drives me. So it drives me forward to share my experiences with other people, which shows that I am in alignment with my energy with this YouTube channel. Um, I really love that. And then another massive thing for me has been learning that I have two alone gates. So there are three total alone gates. This 33 is one of them, 40, and then 12 as well, which I don't have. So gate 33 is the gate of retreat, and that is within my sun sign. And your sun sign makes up a big part of your personality and is core to who you are. Now, before I dive into this, I want to quickly point out that the red in your chart is something that you are unconscious that you have. It typically shows up in how other people view you, while the black is who you see yourself as. So that's something that you're consciously aware of having, which is another way to kind of look at this as you move through it. So 33 is the gate of retreat. And this is the need to retreat, to turn a weak position into a strength. And this has been very true for me my entire life. I have very much been more of the shy person that kind of takes a step back. I'm assessing everything. And I, I because of that, have learned that I don't want to have a business model where I'm on all the time. I want to be able to retreat. So earlier this year, I took three weeks off the YouTube channel. I've taken two months off Instagram. I feel so much more alive by doing that. Um, I also, with the launch model launching an online course and then kind of disappearing for a little bit and then coming back and opening up enrollment again, that's actually a good model for me because it allows me to retreat and take time away to where I'm not having to constantly be on. Another one is gate 40, which is working alone. So this is something, so like, for example, you are you work best alone, right? You learn this about yourself and you say, is that really true? Let me try that on. So I used to have an office with my sister that I shared at her house and I did not like going there. For some reason, I just kept hitting resistance whenever I went. I felt like I was hitting a wall and I, I just... 
I just couldn't, like it was like brain fog or something when I was working with her in the room as well. And so I ended up not going there often and ended up paying for two locations and had to eventually stop paying for the office space because I was never going there. And then I found this out about myself and I was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Like, yes, that is 100% true. And another thing is that my boyfriend would spend the night, he would end up working from here, and I would suddenly not have a great day. Like, I just would keep hitting a wall and it it really impacted me having someone else in the room. So knowing this about myself makes it to where it's not a personal thing. I don't not like my sister being around or my boyfriend being around. I just need to have space to work alone. So learning those two things about myself has been incredibly helpful. Like I don't want to have a business where I have a bunch of people that are in the same place working with me. Now, At the same time, when I look at, I have to move this thing over here. So when I look at this section right here, what is in my earth, which is this is the sign for earth, is 27, which means that I generously like to give to other people. This is what grounds me. So what, you know, my personality is to retreat and to fight hard and assess risks, but what grounds me is to generously give to others. And this 19 over here is that um, I really like to have a community and a place in that community for sensitivity. So previously, you can see how this is red. Previously, I was really hesitant to building an online community because I didn't want to constantly be with people. I, I had learned that, you know, I like to be alone and I don't know about being with people constantly like running a group of people, that sounds like a lot, but learning this about myself, I'm like, oh, actually I do really enjoy community. It's just that if I have these other elements in place, the ability to retreat, the ability to work alone, I do like to be able to plug into a community and build a really safe space where people can be vulnerable which anyone that has been a student of mine, you know that that's what I do in my programs. Uh, It's all about holding space for other people and over giving, right? Like, you know, I'm just like, I just naturally over give. So knowing that about myself, it's it's helpful to realize that, okay, if I am going to get in a place where I'm going to give, then I need to make sure that I'm adequately compensated for that because my natural tendency is going to be to overgive to that person. And right here, 59 is the it's one-on-one relationships with others. So I really thrive in one-on-one relationships with others. I will have a lot of them throughout my career, within my life as well. And so in some ways, like this is indicating that actually I might do good with one-on-one relationships where I am overgiving, but I need to make sure that I'm charging enough to where that is something that will naturally fit and not burn myself out by doing it. Another thing that you can't actually see in this chart here, there's a helicopter flying over right now, so apologies for that noise. Um, Another thing that you can't see in here is that I have what they call quad right. So quad right, these are going to be the arrows at the top of your chart. And as a quad right, I have a brain that just absorbs information like a sponge. It just goes in there and it's like I collect, 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 collect knowledge, but I don't know how much I know until someone asks me a question. So the knowledge that I have is best accessed through other people asking me questions. So positioning myself in a way where other people can ask me questions is going to help me thrive within my business instead of, you know, the an alternative where I am shut out from the world and no one is asking me questions. <laughs> um, another thing here is this four indicates that People are going to come to me with their doubts and I am here to answer their questions as well. So knowing that being a coach is actually a good alignment for me, it's just ensuring that I am a coach in a situation that is properly uh, compensated and it's 
might have, you know, elements of the community as well to support it, but also those occasional one-on-one type relationships. So you can kind of start to see how these things start to mold together. Another thing is that I have, and I'm flying through this really quickly just to show you how much knowledge this can help. And you can see how it's not that scary. Okay, finding out that I need to work alone, cool. Finding out that I overgive to people, yeah, I'm very aware that I do that. But this just gives confirmation of it and makes me see that as a skill rather than something that I need to change because I'm not going to change it. It's just not going to happen. Now, this 44 right here is part of the sales and marketing channel, and that's my ability to position things and share them with other people. But on the flip side of this sales and marketing channel is the ability to use the right words to hook that person. So me hiring someone that can fill in this gap for me would be really helpful. So copy is a big obstacle that I face within my business. So hiring a copywriter that has this skill right here would be huge. I can position it, let them write the copy. That immediately reduces resistance in my life. Okay, I'll share one, a couple more things and then we'll wrap this video. Um, so 53 down here, I've learned that I am someone that is good at starting things, but I'm not necessarily the person that is meant to complete them. So that can be really helpful too in having a team member that can complete things for me that has that strength um, or surrounding myself with people that have that energy as well. So for example, my boyfriend has that part of it. So I like passing that off to someone. I can start things, they finish them. Um, and not letting myself beat myself up for not being able to finish and complete things if it doesn't feel right for me. All right. Last thing I'll say is this 43, which is one of the things that I love uh, about my chart. And if you have it, then you're going to resonate with this as well. And this falls into my Mercury, which is the message you're meant to share with the world. So I can't recommend diving into this number enough. <laughs> so 43, I have these ideas that pop into my brain that kind of are looking at trends and seeing things before they happen. So recognizing things that the collective is not yet going to grasp onto, their ideas that are, yeah, people aren't exactly ready to share just yet, but I don't have the ability to verbalize it, which is what 23 is here. So knowing that I have these ideas, but the inability to verbalize them and it falls within my Mercury, which is how the message I meant to share, well, I'm all about video and helping you communicate ideas that you can't clearly articulate. That's my biggest problem is not being able to articulate the things that I have in my brain. <laughs> so I teach you how to do the same. So you can kind of start to see how these come together. So we'll wrap this here. And now I want to tell you about the mastermind. Part three, business design mastermind. Everything that I've just been sharing with you, I have been diving into on my own. I have not had a community around me to discuss these things with. I've been taking classes with a few people and I have them to kind of bounce ideas off of, but I'm ready to bring this to you guys and form a community of people that are wanting to look at themselves, learn these elements about themselves and build the perfect business model for them. So truly a mastermind where every single week you are learning elements about yourself and you are immediately implementing them, trying them on for that week, reporting back the next week and how those feel and continuing to learn about yourself and accessing my knowledge as a online marketer in terms of the ideal business models that exist or the business models that exist, period, like course business, mastermind, uh, membership, high ticket, low ticket, which one works for you, all of those things. And then also bringing in the knowledge of Barbara Ditlow, who is my human design analyst, who has been doing this for 20 years. 
everything that I just described to you, I have picked up within the last year and I have barely scratched the surface when it comes to human design. She has been doing this for 20 years and has a lot of knowledge of how all of these pieces fit together and can help form an even clearer picture. So Below in the description, I have linked to the sales page for this. I am also going to put my Calendly link in here. So if you want to talk to me about this to see if this would be a good fit for you, please do so. This is not for everyone. You have to be someone that is willing to take risks, right? Now you know why I took this risk because that's my gift. You have to be someone that's willing to take risks and try something out that hasn't really been done before because this is something brand new. This does not exist anywhere else using human design to build the business model that is right for you. So if you are interested, then I would love to chat, book a call with me, click through, read the sales page. It's not perfect, but I'm telling you, I promise that this is going to be one of the most life transformational programs you have ever done and it is going to return massively in terms of just the ease and flow that you will experience in life. So hopefully this video was helpful for you to see how to use human design to build a business model that you love. Click like if it was, drop a comment below with your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video.